would like to say that the theme for the occasion, accessing the African common markets through Ghana, technology, digitization, and industrialization, couldn't have been appropriate at this time when the current government, since assuming office, has championed the digitalization of the Ghanaian economy to ease the way of doing business in Ghana. It is interesting to note that the banking industry in Ghana has completely crossed over in technology, bringing the dilemma of staying in line or staying online. Today, banks in Ghana have deployed a varied array of electronic banking products such as ATMs, online banking platforms, POSs, e-cards, mobile banking, mobile apps, to make banking easy and convenient for their customers. Also, in collaboration with telcos and fintechs, banks in Ghana are conveniently serving their customers through mobile money and business-to-business -business and business-to-customer solutions. My expectation is that in the next couple of years in Ghana, banking will be driven by analytics and improved data visualization, which will be used to predict customer lifestyle and suggest tailor-made banking solutions. I now turn my attention to my topic for discussion today, the current reforms in the banking sector in Ghana. With your permission, my presentation will touch briefly on early and current reforms in the sector in Ghana, its impact on commercial banks, and finally, I apprise you with a perspective from GCB. The business of banking started in the then Gold Coast with the aim of providing financial service to the British enterprises and the colonial administration. In 1896, the Bank of the British West Africa which became Standard Chartered in 1985, opened its first branch in Accra. The success of the bank attracted other foreign banks to begin operations in the then Gold Coast. The Colonial Bank, for instance, for instance started its operations in 1918 and later merged with Anglo-Egyptian Bank, the National Bank of South Africa, and Barclays Bank, and became known as Barclays Bank. The Bank of the British West Africa and Barclays Bank were the only banks operating on the Gold Coast during the period 1920 to 1950. The Ghana Commercial Bank was established in 1953 as the first indigenous bank to reduce the control of the banking sector by the two expatriate banks. Immediately after the independence in 1957, the Bank of Ghana was established to take control over the management of the country's currency. By 1974, many state-owned banks and development financial institutions had also been set up to enhance the financial sector by providing services ignored by the commercial banks. Examples included the National Investment Bank, Agricultural Development Bank, Bank for Housing and Construction, Merchants Bank, and the Social Security Bank. The DFIs raised finance through deposit mobilization, government support, and foreign loans and were involved in providing commercial and development banking services. The reforms experienced in the financial sector and the enactment of the banking law in 1989, PNBC Law 225, saw the operation of a number of locally incorporated banks, including the Meridian BL, the Trust Bank, Carl Merchants Bank, Allied and Metropolitan Bank, and EcoBank. There was too much government control in the financial sector after independence. Banks that were set up between the 1960s and the 1970s were either wholly or majority owned by the public sector. In 1992, however, government began to privatize some of the state-owned banks, and the liberalization of the financial sector led to the entry of a number of foreign banks into the banking industry as well as an increase in the number of domestic banks. The liberalization of the financial sector under the FinSAP also brought about improved savings, enhanced deposit mobilization, financial deepening, and competition in the banking industry. However, lending rates were high, 
with wider spread between deposits and banking and lending rates. The introduction of the new Banking Act in 2004 also led to the elimination of the secondary reserves and adjustments in the minimum capital. The minimum capital was initially increased to 60 million Ghana cities in 2008, and then in 2013, it was increased to 120 million Ghana cities. The new act also saw the introduction of the UNUEL Soul Banking License, which allowed banks to provide various forms of banking services. Having outlined the above brief of the previous reforms and its outcome on commercial banking, let me now focus on the execution of the just ended reforms, which started in 2017, and what has transpired in the commercial banking space and the perspective from GCB. Prior to the current reforms, the financial system was under a considerable state of distress, with banks that were not meeting the capital adequacy requirement and others whose capital was eroded with high non-performing loans. Some of these banks were insolvent and illiquid, others were solvent but illiquid. This state of affairs was largely as a result of poor corporate, corporate governance false financial reporting and insider dealings. The Bank of Ghana hitherto provided liquidity support to these failing banks without addressing the underlying problems that led to the illiquidity and insolvency of these institutions. In short, the financial system had reached a tipping point and the Bank of Ghana could not have assumed business as usual. Therefore, they embarked on a comprehensive reform agenda with the objective of cleaning up the sector and strengthening the regulatory and supervisory framework for a more resilient banking sector. As part of the implementation of the reforms, the following were some of the directives and regulatory guidelines that were issued by the Bank of Ghana. Minimum Capital Directive, by which all universal banks were required to increase their minimum paid up capital to 400 million cities by 31st December 2018. In order to strengthen corporate governance structures across the industry, Bank of Ghana published the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Corporate Governance Directive in March 2018 to provide a framework to regulate corporate governance practices in banks mergers and acquisition directive for banks, fit and proper directive, financial holding companies directive for banks, banking sector cyber and information security guidelines, Basel regulatory capital requirements directive, the rollout of the Basel 2-3 supervisory framework and ensuring the implementation of IFRS 9 by banks. Bank of Ghana also addressed specific risks from high non-performing loans and poor risk management systems. They strengthened the capacity and resources of the banking and supervision department. The Bank of Ghana has undertaken a comprehensive review and improvement of all supervisory processes and ensured strong enforcement of prudential and regulatory requirements. They continue to strengthen overall financial stability risk assessments and the establishment of adequate measures to promote stability of the financial system. As part of the reform exercise, the banking licenses of seven insolvent banks were revoked. Steps were taken by Bank of Ghana to ensure that they exited the market in an orderly manner. Following the recapitalization exercise that ended at the close of business on 31st December 2018, there are now 23 universal banks operating in Ghana. These banks have all met the new minimum and paid up capital of 400 million cities. 16 banks met the new minimum paid up capital requirement, mainly through capitalization of income surplus and fresh capital injection. The reform saw the approval by Bank of Ghana of three applications for mergers. Consequently, First Atlantic Merchant Bank Limited and Energy Commercial Bank have merged. 
Omnibank and Bank Sahara have merged, and First National Bank and GHL Bank have merged. The three resulting banks out of these mergers ensured that they met the new minimum paid-up capital requirement. Additionally, as part of the adherence to the minimum capital directives, private pension funds in Ghana have injected fresh equity capital in five indigenous banks through a special purpose holding company named Ghana Amalgamated Trust. In addition to the state-owned banks, ADB and IB, benefiting from the GATT scheme, the other beneficiary banks, the merged Omni Bank Sahel Sahara, Universal Merchants Bank and Prudential Bank, were selected by GATT on the basis of their solvent status and good corporate governance. As part of the reform agenda, GCB had to play a key role in the process. Following the revocation of the licenses of UT and Capital Banks in August 2017, the Bank of Ghana approved a purchase and assumption agreement, allowing GCB to take over the deposits, all the deposits and purchases of selected assets of the erstwhile banks. The net gap that was created was funded through the issuance of an appropriate financial instrument. Our decision to assume these two banks was underpinned by the following factors. To mitigate or eliminate potential market destabilization and provide for a market of relatively greater stability and consumer certainty. To benefit from the expanded client base and gain access to markets hitherto unavailable to us and enhance growth and shareholder value. Following the acquisition, GCB now has a total branch network of 183 spread across all the district capitals and municipalities of the country. With this spread, our valued customers can now boast of variability of access to our branches for better service delivery. It is also worthy to note that the assumption of these two banks no doubt had significant impact on our expenditures, staffing, and systems rationalization, which impacted our bottom line, especially in 2017. GCB has also complied with the Minimum Capital Requirements Directive, and as at the end of 2018, our stated capital was 500 million Ghana cities. The bank is resilient and has adequate capital to exploit our strategic objectives and take advantage of market opportunities whilst managing risk complexions associated with these initiatives. Furthermore, as part of the Bank of Ghana Corporate Governance Directive, GCB's board has gone through the following training programs as part of the process of ensuring good corporate governance. Corporate governance generally, Bank of Ghana Directives on Corporate Governance, Risk Management. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an eventful reform period during which Bank of Ghana has had to take tough but necessary bold steps to clean up the banking sector and to reposition it to support the economic growth and transformation agenda for Ghana. The just ended recapitalization exercise has repositioned the banking sector as better capitalized, liquid, stronger, and more resilient. Let me briefly highlight some of the pre- and post-reform key financial indicators. At the start of the reforms in August 2017, total assets stood at 89.1 billion Ghana cities for a sector that had 36 banks. Two years after the reform process started, total assets have increased to 121 billion Ghana cities at end October 2019, even with 23 banks. In the same direction, total deposits have improved from 55.7 billion Ghana cities to 78.9 billion Ghana cities over the same comparative period, reflecting a stronger deposit base 
owing to more trust and confidence in the banking sector, with fewer but stronger banks. Banks are beginning to refocus on their core mandate of financial intermediation based on the strong capital base after recapitalization. The industry's capital adequacy ratio, computed in accordance with the new capital requirements directive under the Basel II-III capital framework, stood at 18.9% in 20, October 2019, well above the 13% minimum regulatory benchmark. My expectation after the reforms is for shareholders of banks to exercise control over these institutions, not for the benefit of shareholders and connected parties, but primarily in the interest of depositors, creditors, employees, and other stakeholders. I believe that the continuous strengthening of the regulatory and supervisory framework by Bank of Ghana and all other stakeholders will ensure that the sector is well governed, well managed, and better supervised to restore and maintain much needed confidence in the sector in the medium to long term. Thank you.